This is the Kuala Lumpur International Airport, and it is one of the busiest airports in Asia, taking in an average amount of close to 60 million passengers annually. Spanning over 100 square kilometers, the site where it sits is also one of the largest airport sites in the world. With taking a sizable amount of traffic to Malaysia, it has surely generated economic benefits to the country. Knowing that, how did Malaysia construct its biggest airport ever? Well, to know that, we must first go back over 20 years ago. The Kuala Lumpur International Airport idea first came about when the former government saw that the current capacity of the former Subang International Airport won't be able to meet the future huge influx of travelers coming into the country. They had to do something in order to meet this demand, and they had to do something big to accommodate a bigger demand in years to come. With the help of several firms and government bodies, the Kuala Lumpur International Airport had its groundbreaking event on June 1, 1993. With the architecture of the facility being headed by a prominent Japanese architect by the name of Kisho Kuwakawa, known to have also designed the Kuala Lumpur Central Station. With such an ambitious project back then, and even until now knowing that it sits on a site of over 100 square kilometers, making it one of the world's largest airport sites, makes this infrastructure plan back then such a hard project to take on. It boasts a whopping cost of over 3.5 billion US dollars, along with the work of over 25,000 international workforces. Its master plan involves a three-phase development plan. These would have three runways constructed, two terminals, each with two satellite terminals and several other airport facilities. The first phase of this project involved the construction of the main terminal building and would house a capacity of over 25 million passengers. The second phase would increase that capacity to 35 million a year, whilst the third phase would then increase it to over 100 million passengers. Fast forward years later, on the 27th of June 1998, the Kuala Lumpur International Airport has finally opened its doors to the world. Its main terminal building, or called the KLIA Main, had a floor area of over 3.6 million square feet and a satellite terminal at 1.5 million square feet. This created one of Malaysia's most prominent infrastructures back then. The second terminal building, which is known as the KLIA-2, opened its doors 16 years later in May 2014. It would have a capacity of over 45 million passengers, making it almost double the first terminal. It would boast over 2.7 million square feet of floor area, it would receive the title of the world's largest low-cost carrier terminal and is even constructed along with a mall. Throughout its different phases of construction that lead up to the present years, it has steadily increased its capacity more and more. Along with the likes of constructing a low-cost carrier terminal or LCCT, facility upgrades that would cost millions of Malaysian ringgit, and increasing of usable runways. Kuala Lumpur International Airport's infrastructure is one of a kind. Its terminal building specifically is beautifully designed. Its concept is said to be an airport in the forest as it incorporates a grand nature styled within it. The airport is also said to be one of the biggest airport sites in the entire world. It spans over 100 square kilometers and can hold 120 aircraft movements at a time. The planning for this airport just shows how much they had expected a world filled with travelers. Another feat that makes up Kuala Lumpur's international airport amazing is that it has the tallest air traffic control tower in the world, with a length of over 133.8 meters tall and is the first in the world to use the total airport management systems. This may sound exaggerated, but with Southeast Asia's continuous to innovate both in its infrastructure and technology, it is ensured that one day we may see this region to be a global contender for innovation. Within its infrastructure, it also hosts an animal hotel. This trip for animals isn't just for sending or receiving pets around the world. It also actually lives up to its name as a hotel. It offers people who are looking for that getaway vacation but can't leave their pets alone. So while they are out, their pets are also out on a vacation. Despite having gone through several difficulties in the past related to the financial crisis, pandemics and so much more, its annual passengers haven't actually seen that much damage, with the exception of the COVID-19 of course. The only time it had a negative passenger change was in 2001 and 2020, but in all the rest of its years of operations, it had seen nothing but stability and positive passenger change movement. Anyway, what do you think about the Kuala Lumpur International Airport? Did you learn something new about it today? Or did we miss out on something? Share with us your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to leave us a like and follow us for more amazing videos. Thanks for watching.